This episode of the Wheel of Time Community Show is sponsored by Tor Books and our Patreon supporters. I'm Ebony. I'm Tom. And I'm Kitty. Happy New Year and welcome to the Walk Community Show. That's right, we recorded through the holidays for you guys. It's because we love Wheel of Time and we love y'all. And now here we are, right here, before the dawn of a new age, or well, the dawn of 2020 anyway. And this week, I, Tom, will be the hostess with the mostess. Thanks for tuning in. I feel like it's really gonna be a good show. I feel it, you know, I can feel it like, I feel it, I feel it in the source. Get it? It's funny because it means two things. I don't like this stuff, guys. If you haven't heard the sad news, Watt Wednesdays, the monthly day where we received official news and announcements from Watt on Prime, has come to an end. Uh, here's what the executive producer and lead writer, Rafe Judkins, had to say about that. Wanted to let everyone know that in order to deliver more stuff to you more often and not be tied to a single day of the month, Watt on Prime will no longer do hashtag Watt Wednesdays and instead will give updates for and more on any day of the week as new info comes out using the hashtag Watt on Prime. I'm sure you're as sad as I am that Rafe ended Watt Wednesdays. Rafe seems to be implying by not scheduling announcements, it'll allow the production team to toss us more sweet, sweet Watt news. Though a skeptic might think we may be getting less info this way. Personally, I think it's so that they could focus more of their efforts on production and less on having a specific newsworthy item every month. Though this month, we did get some awesome, awesome, awesome news. I'm really excited for this one. Three new actors were announced last week. The first one is Priyanka Bose. She's going to be playing Alana Mosvani, Aes Sedai of the Green Aja. Pretty excited about that. Alana it plays a pretty critical role and a sometimes controversial one throughout the series. We're going to get into the controversial part at another time because it involves some pretty big spoilers that we don't want to get into right now, just in case there's some new people out there reading the series for the first time in preparation for the show. I think it's safe to assume that Amazon's official description of the character implies that we're going to be seeing Priyanka portraying Alana like a badass battle Aes Sedai, and I'm pretty excited. The way it reads is... Alana is renowned for both her kindness and her temper, and instead of having one warder like Maureen, she has two, Ivan and Maxim. The three of them have a complicated relationship built on love, sex, and respect that welds them into a fearsome force in battle. Alana's two warders, Ivan and Maxim, will be played by Emmanuel Amani and Taylor Napier, respectively. Ivan appears in the books pretty consistently, although kind of quietly throughout the series. He's pretty quiet, but he's present there in the background. Alana's other warder on the show is named Maxim. That differs from the books, in which her other warder is named Owain, or Owen, which is spelt with an I. At first, we were wondering why the change, but Rafe cleared that up for us on Twitter pretty quickly. It turns out that they felt the name was way too similar to Owen, which is Tom Marilyn's nephew in the series, and they didn't want to confuse TV viewers with two similar names. That gets me kind of excited, though, because that implies that they may be playing up Tom Marilyn's backstory a bit earlier or a bit more in depth than they did in the series, and I'm kind of excited about that. I like Tom as a character. Speaking about production, there is none, because filming is currently on break for the holidays. Actress Madeline Madden, you know, Eggween, she posted a great pic on December 20th. It was captioned, the only way to wrap the last day of shooting for the decade. What we got is Joshua Stradowski, Rand, surrounded by Madeline, and the people who will really be making these actors transform into the characters that we love, makeup artists. Clearly they're having a lot of fun here, so that's, I hope that translates well into the acting and the, and the production of the show. And it seems like Rand is already learning to play maybe a new version of Maiden's Kiss. There were a couple of other interesting developments in the Wheel of Time community. Here to tell us more about them is our senior community goddess, Ebony. Hi, Tom. I read that right, right? We're introducing you as a goddess now? What happened to a correspondent or senior most executive epic amazing correspondent or whatever? I had nothing to do with it. If you don't like my new title, you'll have to speak to our show producer. Oh, no. No, no. It's totally well-deserved. I'm just jealous of it. So I'll, I'll have to talk to him about getting a new title. 
So anyway, what do you got for us? As most of you likely know, pre-registration for JordanCon is now open. Currently, the cost is $55 per person, but after the first of the year, that cost goes up to $65. Pre-registration closes March 20th, 2020, so now is the time to get your tickets. Along with registration, you can also pre-order the official JordanCon shirt. This year's shirt was designed by Mike Belichick and can be purchased at www.jordancon.org. These shirts are not shipped. They can only be picked up at JordanCon. I've been going to JordanCon since 2009, the first JordanCon. And honestly, it gets better and better every year. This year, I think there's going to be close to 40 author guests, some great programming, and really there are just some awesome folks there. Just a great time all around. If anyone wants to check it out, go to jordancon.org or on Facebook and Twitter, at JordanCon, Inc. Inc. I'm sure we'll talk about it more as we get closer to the date of the con, which is April 17th through the 19th. The other big news in the world of Wheel of Time community is licenses. In the past, several artists, Tavern Tees and Badali Jewelry, all had licenses to create Wheel of Time products. In fact, Badali was the first to hold a license and create the Aes Sedai ring, the great serpent biting its tail. But back in October, all the previous license holders had their licenses removed. So we were all been wondering, where are we going to get our Wheel of Time swag from? We knew Sony was talking to companies, but we weren't sure who. Well, it was announced last week that Valerian Steel signed a license agreement with Sony, the show producers, to produce weapons, armor, jewelry, statues, and Angriol, the magical items from the show. They're the first official group to get a license. A little about Valerian Steel. They're a brand of Dalek Inc. They make the Game of Thrones collection, which is a series of collectible weapons and armors recreated from the actual props that were used on HBO's Game of Thrones. In addition to making weapons and armor from the show, they make replicas from the books, A Song of Fire and Ice, and work closely with George R.R. R. Martin to make sure everything fits his vision. So I think that's a good sign for us. Thanks, Ebony. Sure thing, Tom. See you next time. It's time for our special guest. And here to tell you all about her and to give her a warm introduction is our senior unicorn expert, Kitty. Hey, Kitty. Hi, Tom. Well, who is our guest? Tell us, tell us, I wanna know who is it, who is it, I wanna know. Our guest is a well-known actress, writer, voiceover artist, and singer best known for her work in the movie Walk the Line and for her award-winning Star Wars fan film Saber, as well as for her production work on Team Unicorn. She's known far and wide as a true expert on geek culture, including things like Star Wars and Fortnite. And of course, she's a huge fan of the Wheel of Time. Please welcome Claire Grant. Hi, Claire. Hi. All right, let's get right into it. Okay. How long have you been reading The Wheel of Time? I've been reading Wheel of Time since 2001, I think. Thanksgiving, 2001. All right. How did you come across it? I had a few friends who were my reading buddies, and they knew very well what type of books that I would like. And they tried to get me to read Wheel of Time for several years. And it was daunting how big the series was and how far behind I was, at, even at that time. But... Um, for my birthday one year, my friend Joe Ten got me the first three books, and I took the first one with me on a on like a road trip over the Thanksgiving holiday, and just sat in the back seat of a minivan and just didn't stop reading until I was done with all of the books. That's amazing, and you don't get car sick. I. Don't kind of know. Jealous. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. I I get it. Sometimes I get car sick. Sometimes I don't. Um, I think I just really needed a an escape, and it it got me there real fast. Oh yeah, wheel of time will do that. Yeah. So how many books were out when you started? I think the first nine were out. I remember that the first book I waited to read was Crossroads of Twilight. Who are some of your favorite characters? I guess my favorite characters changed as I progressed in the story. And when it's all said and done, I think my favorite character is a queen. I think I just really loved her character arc and her journey and where she eventually got to. But while I was reading the books, I really connected to Avienda and Rand and then even loved, um, 
I loved men for a long time. And I was very fascinated with Katsuane for a long time. Okay. Um, yeah. But now that it's over, I think a queen. That's all right. All right. So be honest. Were there any sections that you just kind of skimmed over, like any of the romance or battles or food descriptions? No, I didn't do... Is there anything do... you just kind of miss a little bit? No, I didn't do any any skimming. I, I'm one of those people who... Um, as I'm reading a book, I, I'm i like acting it out in my head at the same time. So I don't speed read anything. I don't go anything fast. I assign each character in the book a uh, personality and a voice. So while I'm reading it, I'm reading it how I think those characters would be like saying the words or thinking or whatever. And um, yeah, I didn't I didn't do any skipping. I didn't do any skimming i just like took it all in that's great yeah all right so i heard that you've met robert jordan i did um when new spring came out it was the first book that had come out after i had moved to los angeles and when i was in memphis he never really came to town on any book tours but in los angeles he came to town for a book tour, so i gathered a couple of my friends who had never read the books but were willing to wait in line with me so I could get as many books signed by him as possible. And um, I waited, I think, like five or six hours to meet him. And when I finally got up to meet him, I I have a, a stutter and it's not, it's not bad at all. And I've had years of speech therapy to like work on it. But um, I definitely, I went into full stutter mode when it was my turn to talk to him and get my picture with him. And, um, it was a little embarrassing, but, um, it was, it was fun. He was wonderful and patient with me. And yeah, I just told him how much I loved his books and he got a picture. <laughs> That's great. It's probably kind of endearing now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, um, I've never waited in line for anyone's autograph before. That's the only time I've done it, but it was totally worth it. And the I gave two of the books away, um, one to my ex-boyfriend at the time who I had, I had gotten to read the books and then he fell in love with the books. And then one to the, one of those two people I had mentioned that had originally gotten me to read the books, um, my friend Brett. And then I kept the other four for myself, and they're like my prized possessions. What do you think of the upcoming Amazon Prime TV show? I am so excited for this TV show. Um, I'm on board so far with all of the casting choices. I think um, I think because I'm an actor and uh, a producer, I I understand that when you're telling a story, when you're adapting a story from source material that it's not going to be exactly like the source material and that you have to you have to make choices that will best serve the the series and what you're producing and 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 so some sometimes it's um it's different than what a reader would interpret so i i tend to have a little more um like I give people a little more leeway when it comes to producing live action versions of things that I've already read. So, I mean, everything I've seen so far, it looks really good. Um, the casting seems great so far. I don't have any complaints about the casting. I'm excited to see where this goes. If Amazon approached you and offered you yes. any role in oh, the series that hasn't already been cast, who would you want to play? Okay, so there's like who I would want to play and then also who I would be right for as an yep. actor, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, I guess like who I would want to play men, I'd probably be great for men. I'm too tall for men. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and then also, I guess like um, I'd probably be a good Swan Sanche. I'm like age appropriate for that. <laughs> Yeah, um, actually, I could see that of you. Yeah, I'm like, 
I'm like age appropriate for an Aes Sedai and because I are, I have such a young look, I fit that well. So like, I'm 40. I think she's 40. <laughs> but I look younger. I mean, we don't and they all look know, younger. No. Right, we don't actually know. I guess we don't actually know how old she is. Yeah. So her. Um, but then also, um, I really wouldn't mind being one of the Forsaken. Like, I love being evil. Oh my God. Or Aleda. I would kill to be Aleda. Could you imagine? Yes. That's going to yes, be I the could. greatest role on the show. Like that, that actress is going to have so much fun. <laughs> so you are married to actor Seth Green. Yes. Has he read the books? He has not read the books. Um, he's real busy. He's like the busiest person I know. Um, he has not read the books. He says he wants to read the books. I keep telling him he just needs to start with uh, New Spring. I feel like yes. that's just like a really good launching point for people who are Because it's short mm -hmm. and it's easy to read. Yeah. And I also feel like it gives you um, a lot of the, like the MO for Moraine. Um, yes. And also Swan. When you meet Swan, it's a more meaningful interaction with her throughout the books if you already know what you know like that she's on she's on the good side you know um but yeah he's he says he's gonna read it one day have you convinced any of your other friends to read the books uh, like everyone i know literally everyone i know i have been <laughs> shipping these books on everyone i know um both of my little brothers have read the books. Um, both of them have Wheel of Time tattoos. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah. Um, do you have one? I do not have one. I, I, sh I, could, I should probably get one. I convinced no. um, one of my brothers. Um, he He's going to hate me for saying this, but he went a little basic and just got the generic symbol for Wheel of Time. But then another one of my brothers... He went super cool and he wrote, um, he used the old tongue to like write himself a message on his forearm, which is really cool. I love that. And, That's great. and then he also, oh, he has two Wheel of Time tattoos. Then he got a, he got Rand's sword with the hair on, um, in, in like, you know, the hair on sword on, on his arm. <laughs> what other projects are you working on these days? Well, I shot a couple movies this year. One is a romantic comedy that has some sci-fi elements to it, I guess. Um, and it's real silly. I'm not sure if it's gotten distribution yet. Um, and then I made a, a horror film this year that I'm really excited about. And that one we've been submitting to a bunch of festivals and... Yeah, it's got some creature. It's got a creature in it, and I, I yeah. personally love puppet creatures and realistic effects over. Um, what did you have do them? The guy who worked, who helped work on like Pan's Labyrinth, he he made the puppet for this for this little movie, um, and it looks really good. And so it's like a live puppet with. Um, real effects that they're overlaying some digital effects on top of it. So that's already out. That's already in. Um, no, festival. that one. Those are that one is um, making the festival circuit right now. So I'm not sure when it'll be distributed. I think it has to head all the festivals before it can be shown. And then a movie that I shot a couple years ago that came out this summer called Changeland that actually my husband wrote and directed uh, and starred in because he's an overachiever. Um, that one came out this summer and I believe is going to be um, released on some other platforms soon that I'm not really allowed to talk about. But that's fair. Yeah, you can already see it on um, Amazon and iTunes and it'll be on some other platforms soon. Oh, that's great. Yeah. A lot's going on for you. Yeah. But I feel like in the future, you might fit in a convention that has to do with the Wheel of Time. I hope so. Any final thoughts on the Wheel of Time or? I feel like the Wheel of Time has something for anyone to relate to. Um, 
It doesn't really isolate men or women and the world that Robert Jordan created is so vast and detailed and just wonderful, delightful retreat from the real world that I, I just, I, I hope everyone gets a chance to read it and feels the same way I do. I've really just met like one person who did not get into these books. <laughs> one person in my whole life. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview with us. Ah, thanks for having me. Back to you, Tom. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Claire. And thank you, Kitty. You're amazing. As per the huge. Everyone make sure to follow Claire at Claire Grant on Twitter and Instagram. Welcome to the end of the show. As always, please subscribe to our channel and click the thumbs up button or leave a comment. We like comments, especially positive ones. If you have a friend who enjoys the Wheel of Time, tell them about us. Tell them about DragonMount.com and our show. Sharing is caring. Special thanks to our show sponsor, Tor Books, as well as our fantastic Patreon community. If you want to learn more about how our show is made and get additional insights into the Wheel of Time, you too can become a Patreon supporter. We have a lot of big plans for this show and your contribution will go a long way towards making them a reality. And be sure to follow Dragon Mount on social media and we'll see you next time.